Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. For today's tutorial, I'm gonna take it nice and easy. It's been about four weeks since I've been in my studio. I'm a little bit out of practice um, with the filming, so please bear with me. I've decided to do a project which, just out of sheer joy really, something that I love doing, um, and I thought I'd take you guys on that journey. You may have seen me use this technique before. It's one that I created with chalk paint and I really love it. It's the embedded leaf or fossilized leaf, I like to call it, into chalk paint. But this time around, instead of sample boards, I'm going to apply it to this small console table, which once lived in my house, it's since been replaced for a larger piece of furniture. It's been knocking around in that corner over there and I now think, let's give it a whole new lease of life. So let's take a closer look at the actual project. Let's talk prep work for this tutorial. So if you've got a piece of furniture that is um, untouched with any paint, it might have just a varnish finish. At this stage, I would say, choose the color of your leaf print that you want to be at the end. It will not make any sense at this stage. I know it won't, guys. You may have to watch forward so it kind of makes sense backwards, if that makes any sense give it a canvas coat. You can go ahead, straight over the top, one coat of chalk paint, and you will be at the stage when we can start thinking about the actual technique. In my case, I have a piece of furniture that I've previously painted with chalk paint. It's had clear wax and dark wax on the finish. Now, many other paint brands um, say wax is last and you cannot paint over a wax finish. You need to remove all of the paint and wax not with Annie's paint. You can paint straight over the top and you're good to go again, which I think is fabulous. It's great if you want to change your projects quite frequently. Um, the prep work that is involved on this piece for me is these curly cues, these plastic moldings that I added probably about six years ago when I did this. They've got to come off because I want the surface area for my technique. I added them because it was a a cheap piece of furniture that had poor connections and I had to do a bit of filling. I'm pretty sure when I oik them off, I'm gonna to have to do a lot more filling and sanding on those areas. I will speed that up. I'm pretty sure you all know how to um, fix something like that. I'm using two pack filler, which will dry quick. And then I'm gonna go in with sand, uh, sanding it smooth. And then I can proceed with my first coat, my canvas coat in the color that I hoping the leaves will come out we may get a bit of this, I'm not sure. It's a while since I've done it over a wax finish. I don't care, it's a great color. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll speed it up and I'll see you on the other side of the canvas coat.
canvas coat over the whole piece has now thoroughly dried. It's had about three hours drying time. So that should be good to go with the next part of the process. I've got a couple of things that I'd like to point out. Some of the filling where I filled it was quite rough. I'm not worrying about that. There's gonna be lots of texture. So if you've got a rough piece, then this may be the technique to cover up any of those imperfections. The other thing is the iron handle here in the middle, it has got quite a considerable amount of bleed through. I'm not worrying about this. It's something that when I get bleed through on furniture, I keep on going with the process. You can fix it later. Uh, a shellac coat and another coat of chalk paint should be good. With the handle, it's only on the handle and I quite like the way it's looking. So whatever happens on the next coat of paint, we can map out the way that we go with that. It could even be as simple as adding some gilding wax. It'll all blend in beautifully. So now's the time to head out into the garden and hunt for some beautiful leaves with great vein detail. I'm gonna scour around our garden, see what we can find and show you some of the good examples of what will really work well with this technique. So let's go outside. So some of the leaves that I'm looking for are ones with great shape. Now these on this little tree has got such a wonderful shape to the actual overall leaf. And of course it's got great vein structure underneath. You can see all of those beautiful leaves. At this time of year, these leaves are perfect for the job because they're quite new, quite supple and really work well in this technique. So this is a possibility to um, my embedded leaf technique. Let's take a look at some of the other leaves that might work. Straight away, down here. This is something that I've used quite a lot in this technique. This is a geranium. Um, and if I pull that leaf off, let me show you. Can you see how wonderful these fresh leaves and veins are on the underside of this plant so you can take the stalk out to be honest I think I might use the geranium because look at all of that lovely structure and pattern whoops it's gone let's go get, go with another one um look at that lovely structure great vein leaf and they're very soft but quite strong and sturdy and they're easily um flexible so this would work really well I think I'm probably going to go for this leaf but I'm going to carry on looking to see if there's anything else here we are another leaf that would work really really well but I'm going to tell you why I won't be using this great um, vein structure underneath but I don't like the shape I like the more interesting shapes this is um, an aquilegia let me bring this over to you aquilegia can you see this a lovely shape but the vein detail is very slight so you're really looking for something a little bit more like this soft 
uh, new tree leaves work really well as long as they're quite new um, what else have we got we've got a lovely Acer over here now Acer leaves I'm gonna take one of these these do work quite well there's not much leaf structure underneath but what you've got here is a really interesting leaf and look at that beautiful color you could mimic the colors of these leaves in fact I have done a project with Acer leaves I'm gonna post a picture in a little while where you can see how wonderful autumnal shades work with this technique Oh, this is very interesting. Um, this is a strawberry leaf. Three main leaves and lots of wonderful structure underneath again. That would work really well. Nice and soft, but very strong. So that would work really, really well. Um, something to stay away from is something that's got quite a lot of curl in the leaf. Like, ooh, let's, let's reach over here. Sorry, Mr. M something like this although it's great can you see how when this this stem is stretched out it goes kind of really wrinkly so that would although it's got lovely um, structure it wouldn't really flatten too well it kind of doesn't stick down you get creases and wrinkles so that wouldn't be a good leaf to use I suppose it just is trial and error do some sample boards with your leaves that could be a potential Probably not. As I return back to my studio, I am going to remove the centre stem from the geranium leaves not all leaves you will need to do this you may be able to keep the stem on but with the geranium leaf they grow center outward so i know that's going to get into my way also you can see me applying them to a book or a magazine you wouldn't want to do this the day before you don't want to press out all of those lovely vein details but it's a great place to store the leaves just half an hour before you start the whole process Okay, so now I have my leaves safe and sound in my book or magazine. Um, I'm gonna move on to the process. So what I've got here, the table's moved down so I can work on the top surface. I'm gonna work this in section by section. Um, I've got a mix mat to one side and I've got three colors. I've got old white, um, French linen again, and some country gray. Now I'm gonna use um, these colors because I want a neutral feel to this. Now you don't have to use um, neutrals, you could use greens for the leaves. I'm gonna post a picture now of the project that I did a long time ago. That was with the Acer leaves, which didn't have too much vein detail, but you can see just how amazing if you choose autumnal colors with this look. So you should be able to see that right now. Also, I've got to hand some, um, some brushes that I'm going to apply the leaves to the surface of the project. This is a little bit like gluing the leaves down, vein side down, into the project. So if you think of it a bit like decoupaging the leaves to the surface, but applying quite a healthy coat of paint. It does need to be sort of half a millimetre thick to embed the leaf in. Stick with me guys, it will make sense a little later on. So the colours that I'm going to use for the leaves, I'm going to go with a mix of um, French linen and country grey and old white, probably much darker than the overall piece. So the leaves stand out a little bit darker. I'm sure that doesn't make sense either, but as you watch, you'll see. So we're going to apply some paint to the mix mat so I can play around with those shades and then we're going to get stuck in with applying the leaves in a pattern. So your pattern is your choice. You could go just um, very symmetrical. I feel that these leaves look a little bit like a grapevine leaf, even though they are a geranium leaf. 
but I'm gonna kind of wrap it across the surface and then round the side and then a little bit more sparser and smaller leaves as we go down the legs. Okay, so I've decided that my pattern is going to run across um, the table and down one side and a few other leaves just hiding some of the um, areas where the filling is not so good. Um, the first leaf I'm going to go in with is a large leaf. Remember, your leaves need to go vein side down into the chalk paint rather than the other way around. So make sure that the veins go into the chalk paint. So I'm going to start with um, my colour mixing. Um, a little bit French linen. I think I'm going to go more French linen on the larger leaves um, because I'm going to do the smaller leaves a little bit lighter. I think that will add some dimension. So I've loaded up my brush and I'm going to apply a healthy coat of chalk paint to the area where I want the leaf to be. Make sure it's nice and thick and kind of feather it out to the edges because that'll help with the overall look later. Now you could add different tones of color to that section. You could do darker red, lighter red, orange, and it would come out like a leaf would look naturally. There we go. And we're gonna take this leaf out of the book and we're gonna place it on top of the chalk paint, like so, and tap it in gently with my finger, making sure that we get contact to contact with the chalk paint. Oh, I can hear the ice cream van outside. Does that mean it's time for ice creams? Like so. Just tap in. Now what you'll find is um, underneath the leaf where we've embedded to the chalk paint, that will stay wet for quite some time. It's kind of sealing that paint in and it will dry on the outside. So that's good. Once it's dry around the outside, we know it's not long before it's time to remove. It will look messy. Your paint will go over the leaf, but don't worry about that. As long as you know where the leaf is, to remove it later, that's all that matters. Right, we'll go in with a smaller leaf and slightly less of the French linen, I think. We're going to go in here. There's Mr M walking in. I wonder whether he's... Oh, he's watering the plants outside. I'm wondering whether he's bought me an ice cream. He's watering his plants in the garden after I've just taken all of these leaves away from him. So there you go. You can see quite a healthy amount. Let's grab, I'm gonna go into the book a bit further because I think I've got some bigger leaf yet. There's a big leaf. Different size. Again, vein side down. I'm gonna orientate this slightly different angle. Oops, we'll go there. Tapping it in, spreading it out into the wet paint. And these leaves are nice and flexible, so they, they really will stick in. Push it down in the middle and we'll move on to the next leaf. Slightly, we'll go, we'll go with a bigger one again, I think. 
will go up here. The trick is to make sure that you apply enough paint to cover the hole underneath of the leaf. Should do. Now you can overlap these leaves, that's not a problem. I'm gonna probably just overlap just that leaf there. Vein side down again. The smaller leaves I'm gonna overlap and do lighter shades. There's some birds that are happy in the garden today. Just make sure each end of the leaf is down, embedded into the paint. Lovely.
Whilst I'm waiting for the leaves to dry, or at least the outside edges of the leaf where we've applied the paint, um, you will find that if you tap the leaves, you can hear squidgy paint underneath. Um, just keep on tapping them from the centre out to make sure that the paint is um, good contact to good contact on each leaf. Uh, and make sure there's no lift up on the edges. Remember, it's a little bit like decoupage. You want to make sure that everything is adhered to the surface with the chalk paint. So there's a few ways that you could go with your project. I'm looking at this and thinking, how fabulous does the green look? Should I have gone with maybe Amsterdam green and furl as a mix and then gone with a neutral colour over it? It would have been absolutely beautiful. Why didn't I think of that at the top of this video? Never mind. I said that I would go for neutrals and I'm going to stick with neutrals. I have considered going with graphite or Athenian black over the top and leaving all of those leaves as neutral colours underneath. That would be amazing. Remember, colour choice on this technique is completely yours. But I'm going to stick with the trajectory that I went on and I'm going to still go with neutral on neutral. At the end of the process, we'll be applying lots of dark wax, which should show up all of the beautiful details of the veins. Now, the next coat of paint, once this is all dried around the edge, the application of that paint finish is completely up to you. You could go in with a smooth finish with a roller. You could use your brush as a stipple. Remember, these leaves are now like a stencil. So all of the lovely edges of the leaf, we're gonna use these like a stencil. So stippling would be good. I think I'm gonna go in with my brush any what way, quite thick, then heat the paint up for a few um, cracks and crevices. So it really does look kind of stone-like. Uh, maybe a little bit of stippling as we travel down the legs. So there's different textures. It's all about texture with this project. Um, I'm gonna stick with a mix of country grey old white for the whole overall all piece. I'm not gonna change too much in colour tones, but I'm gonna use up the leftovers of my paint on the mix mat, add some more white, and then go in with this any what way, heating it up so we get a few cracks as we travel down, a little bit of stippling, and then we can start removing the leaves once that's all dried.
So the paint is just about dry. There's a few wet areas where the paint is thick, but I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna take my time taking the leaves now off. I've got a few tools here that I've got that maybe will help me. These are kind of like, they look like dentistry tools, little picky tools. Um, you might want to use a palette knife, cocktail stick, anything that you can kind of just lift under the leaf in the center part of each leaf. Each leaf where the stem came from is probably the best part to lift the leaf and then gently pull from the center outwards. So I'm going to start with probably this leaf because it overhangs, it's easy to get at and then I'm going to work across the whole piece removing each leaf one at a time.
After a couple of hours of drying time, we're good to go with the finishing layer of wax. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to bring up at this stage. So I love how my leaves are looking and they do look a little bit like a grapevine. So I had considered taking a small rigger brush and adding a stem that connects each leaf with a little curly frond at the end. I've scrapped that idea because I want it to kind of look still quite contemporary with these leaves. And I'm just gonna go in with my clear and dark wax. Had you done your piece with different colors to mine and maybe gone with a darker color palette, let's say, I don't know, graphite and old violet, something darker, you could have gone in with white wax and that'll bring all of the beautiful details and cracking in a um, monochromatic way. Um, you could use clear wax and black wax and that will give you a more cooler colour palette to the end results. But I really love dark wax. You all know that I really like dark wax. So I'm going to go in with dark wax which should warm this colour up. It will go from quite a cool cream to a warm cream. Um, so I'm going to apply a healthy coat of clear wax. Now, um, not normally would I apply a healthy coat of clear wax to a piece, but this has got lots of paint. It's quite thick, it needs to penetrate. And also, it allows you to manipulate the dark wax much easier on the pass of dark wax. So you can, if you've got too much dark wax, you can remove it with a little, little more clear wax. So let's get the clear wax on, and then we can do the fun part. So I have my dark wax and the same brush that I've been using for the clear wax. One thing that I haven't done is rubbed the wax in or buffed the clear wax in with my cloth. I've left it with a quite heavy residue. It's kind of still quite greasy on the surface and that's good. So I can now start adding the dark wax to the surface and then we'll use the cloth to take away what we need. So load up your brush quite heavy and any what way over the surface, pushing into all of those crevices. Now if you've got a really good coat of clear wax on the surface, then it will not grab anywhere. So that's what we don't want, any grabbing areas with the dark wax pushing into all of the details. Now it does look a hot mess. It might feel like, wow, that's a lot of dark wax, but honestly, just watch in a moment when we start taking some of this dark wax off. So make sure it's everywhere. Cross hatch your brush. really work it in. 
all of those lovely cracks that we created with the paint should then really stand out. So section by section, that's my first section. Going in with my lint free cloth and I'm gonna start just pulling away some of the wax. You might need a couple of cloths and bringing back the lightness of the colour. Now I have an anomaly up here that I'm not keen on, so I'm going to go back in with some clear wax just to free up, get the colour back lighter. I think I touched up some paint, so it's grabbing on that area. But never fear, clear wax should just lighten that back up. And here, I know that I did it here. So that's that, we can start buffing this off. A little bit more there. And here. simple as that. 